I had a wrong concept, first of all, of what Jesus had paid for and what that opened up to me. But secondly, what the Father's heart is really like. What he's really like. He's not angry. He's not upset. He's totally happy. He's totally satisfied. And the invitation is for you and I to come deeper. Well, my testimony is that uh, I'm, I'm on this track of wanting to, you know, have my doctrine as well, well as, as it can be. And, you know, we knew about the being born again and wonderfully saved in a Billy Graham uh, meeting in Toronto many years before most of you were born. And uh, then I found out from the Pentecostals that there was more and and about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then we learned a little bit about deliverance from Derek Prince. And, and, but still, it was coming from that kind of an Old Testament perspective. But there was a woman by the name of Catherine Kuhlman that just astounded me in many ways. And she was so different than all the other preachers, in, at least in my experience. Because she didn't beat you up and tell you to smarten up and when are you going to do what the Bible says and when are you going to get it together and, and all that kind of thing. But no, she just talked about, about the love of God. And, and she want to know what he's really like. This is what he's really like. He heals that little boy and he healed that woman and he healed that person and that person. And I can remember reading her book and saying, I'm going to those meetings. And we drove down to Pittsburgh and I'm like, oh God, please can we just see one miracle? Just one, I want to see one. And to my amazement, there were, there were so many, I just lost track. I mean, it was one after another after another. So she became one of my heroes. And, and I would listen to her little radio program, you know, that was on every night. Anybody here listen to, listen to that? Catherine Kuhlman. I mean, it's 30 odd years ago now, but, but still, it, it, was, it was amazing. And she was going to be one of the speakers at a Holy Spirit conference in Jerusalem back in 1974. And I'm like, I got to go to that. And so I went to that because she was there. And there were others there. There was Pat Robertson and Jamie Buckingham and, and another guy named David Duplessis. But, but she was the main event for me. Well, when I got there, uh, it, was, it was a big Congress hall with two to 3,000 people filled with Christians from all over the, the Western world for the most part. And up on the platform, they had all these charismatic leaders, Presbyterians, Anglicans, Catholics, nuns, uh, et cetera. And my, my first response was sort of judgmentalism. What are all those clergy doing up there? They're probably not even saved, you know, I was just looking at them all like that. And then David Duplessis got up and he started in all the John 17 stuff. And, and he would say, uh, we're called to love, obviously. And so my, my question for you is, why can't you love them? And he would then talk some more and then he'd come back to it. So my question for you is, why can't you love them? All of us have had our doctrine shift from glory to glory and change here along the way but the, the love of God never changed for you from the beginning, so why can't you love them? And he, it, I felt like he shot my heart full of arrows. I was so convicted and so exposed that I lost it publicly in that meeting. I was sitting in the crowd like you, but I completely lost it. I just could not stop blubbering and crying, and, and I don't mean just quietly, tears running down my face. I lost it. I just could not get a hold of myself. And I'm like, God, what is going on? What, what, I, I feel like I'm falling apart. And then we go back to the hotel room <clears throat> for sleep at night, and the guy I was with, he was just, you know, lie down and out because it was a long day, touring and then the conference and on and on. <clears throat> I'd lie down on that bed. And all of a sudden, his presence would start to come in just these waves. And at first, it was just like, ah, wow, that felt nice. 
And, uh, but then it would increase, and 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 increase, and increase, and increase, and increase. And that happened all week long. I think I got about six or seven hours sleep for the entire week because when I would lie down, these waves of heaven would start coming upon me. And I can remember saying at one point, God, if one more wave comes upon me, I'm not going to live through this. But the wave came anyway, and obviously I did live through it. But I'm telling you, it, 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 it was unsettling, and it changed me. If you'd asked me at the time, what do you think that was? Uh, I might have said, well, it was God. Um, it, it, it was just Jesus drawing near and loving up on me, I guess. But today I would say, no, that, that was the Father's love that came and found me, and I had a revelation from heaven about what the Father's love is like. Now, you would think that would do it, wouldn't you? And it, and it did some stuff. I mean, it, it certainly shifted me in the right direction. Well, years later, Carol and I went to Indonesia, and we just got so loved on by those people over there that we said, that's it, we're going into the ministry. Now, I'd been to Bible school years before, but never really gone for it. So we were thinking business is it. And, uh, you know, last night's teaching about shame and things, shame can hold you back from your destiny. Because I figured when, when your first marriage fails in spite of everything you try to do, well, that's it for you. You're not going to be in the ministry. But I had a dear friend who said, whatever happened to your love for souls? And I said, well, I still have that. He said, well, then you need to go for it. And that encouraged me so much. Anyway, we went to Indonesia just to, you know, give our testimony and help out and everything. And we got so wrecked by those people, we came back home in the airplane and said, God, we'll do anything. We'll go anywhere. We, we just, whatever. And he said, start a church in Carol's hometown. And so that's what we did. And, uh, but we said, but we want it to be a love church and not just a place that people come to get beat up on Sunday morning. I want them to get love to life. And, and we had a whole load of young people that uh, wonderfully came into the kingdom and, and, and so on. And, and our first church that was just there a couple of weeks ago, we had a wonderful meeting with them. But about 10 years later, Friends in YWAM said to me, you, you guys need to have Jack Winter come. So I said, okay, who's Jack Winter? And they said, well, he, he, he's just like a fathery, wonderful guy in the kingdom, and uh, you'll love him. And I said, well, what, what's he speak on? What's his message? And they said, the father heart of God. And I was like, the what? What's that? And, you know, we talked around about it, and he said, well, he's a father heart, and he's this and that. He's, honey, he talks about the love of God. Okay, why didn't you say so? <clears throat> so, so Jack came, and uh, I'll never forget it. It's, it, it, was, it is so clear in my memory because uh, John 14 is one of my very all-time favorite passages of Scripture. How many have a favorite passage of Scripture? My grandfather got me to memorize this passage of Scripture uh, one summer at the cottage, and, and uh, when I got it right, he gave me a chocolate bar, so I thought that was worth it. But Jack opened it up, and he started reading, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Just while we're there, tell your friend, by the way, Jesus is coming back. But verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, sorry, I read that, verse 4, where I go you know and the way you know. Well, Thomas interrupts him. He said, time out. Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. Now see, I'd use that verse multiple times to, to pray with someone to receive Christ. There, there's no other way uh, uh, except Jesus. And it's not a narrow way. It's a very generous way that God the Son would come and pay your debt so you had a proper basis of forgiveness. This is not all that narrow, friends. This is huge. But Jack read that, and then he stopped, and he said, so where is it we're going? And I probably blurred out, we're going to heaven, Jack. Yeah, okay. But what does it say? Someone else said, well, we're, we're, we're receiving eternal life. Yeah. But what does it say? It says we're going to the Father. And you know, it was at that moment, I had a brief moment where I wasn't sure that's what I wanted to do or not. Because I didn't want to go under the microscope and hear about a thousand things that I needed to fix and smarten up about. And what was wrong? I had a wrong concept, first of all, of what Jesus had paid for and what that opened up to me. But secondly, what the Father's heart is really like. What he's really like. So he's not angry. He's not upset. He's totally happy. He's totally satisfied. Uh, and the invitation is for you and I to come deeper. So if I ask you this question, how many are followers of Jesus? Wave excitedly. Yoo-hoo! And, and when we talk that language, we think, well, I want to emulate him. I want to be like him. I want to pray like he does and, learn, and walk like he does and do like he does and all that stuff. But actually, we need to stop for a minute and say, wait a minute, where is he going? I'm following him. Where are we going, Lord? We're going to the Father. That's where, that's where journey's end is here. We're, that's where we're going. And I had that brief moment where I didn't know if that's where I wanted to go. Why? Because of a misunderstanding about the nature and the character of God the Father. See, I'd read all the Old Testament stories, and I, I knew that when you, when you messed up, you know, the earth opened and swallowed you, and that, that's... You got what you deserved again and again and again. And, but, but, I, but I started, see, Jack brought to, to me and us a theology about the Father's love that I needed because the experience itself did not quite get me there. I needed to see that this was normal, not just like a one-off uh, encounter over here, but no, this is, this is the pattern for all of us to come into a revelation of who the Father is and what He's really like.